Hey guys, um, I'm going to try something a little different. Uh, I've been saying this for a while, but I'm going to try to keep these videos short, so I'm just going to try to put out more of them, but shorter. Um, this one, the, the power of life and death is in your tongue. So what are we saying? What are we speaking? What are we telling others? What are we telling the body of Christ? You know, right now it's kind of, I mean, I don't like any of this social media garbage. You know, maybe if I was a young kid, I might, but but here I am. You can get sucked into it pretty easy. The sensationalism of it, just the, the you know, which I did. Um, I got chastised by two different people for some of my stuff on Facebook. Um, why that computer was blinking, but so, um, one was a young man in church and another one was somebody that's not even saved. So then we kind of reevaluate. It's like, you know, cause I was doing the quick posts and just, you know, this, the headline sounded good, but I really hadn't checked out the story enough. Um, see where it's coming from. What was its source? Um, so I kind of, you know, I mean, we all can get caught in that trap. So what are we saying, guys? Because are we speaking life to people? Or are we speaking death? And on my Facebook, if you look at the channel, you see a lot of stuff that's reposted from some people. And some of them, it seems a little brazen, maybe. Several of them are just really, really into the sin piece. Proclaiming, you know, repent. And all that's great, and there's a reason why I repost it. The Lord told me to plow down the middle. So, not enough of that's portrayed, brought forth, talked about in the church. And also not enough about the grace and forgiveness, because it's got twisted up into anything goes. Um... Grace to have your space to just, you know, do whatever. Not true. <sighs> so, I am going to try to keep this under five minutes. So, I'm, where I'm coming from, guys, with this is guard our words. Guard what we say through prayer. Be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and your word being you your source get it in your secret place um one time it's a long story but one of many but in the midst of a trial with someone that i loved and but he's telling me different things to do and six in the morning and in a world and everybody else is telling me and even people in church complete opposite of what I'm feeling, you know, I'm like, man, God, but I don't want to just be mealy mouth washed and compromised and all that stuff. I, you know, I need to do something with this. What, God? First, I got to complain. God, how did the enemy get in? What door did I leave open? How did this sin enter in? Then, blaming God. God, I, you know, I'm a minister. Tells me to, you know, random cities, for almost three years he did, and we're gonna start back up this in, on the 4th of July, actually. Pretty sure maybe sooner, but last one was 2,000 miles away. And all I had, guys, was one little piece. Go find the newspaper and talk to the reporter, and that was it. I had a long way to go, I had to drive, and there's six, seven days in the car, and so we went. But this particular situation, you know, first, and that's what I told God, I was like, man, God, I, you know, just I'm go wherever you tell me to go, I do whatever you tell me to do. Of course, you know, we all pull the, try to pull this wild card out, I pay my time, I give offering, blah, 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 da, da, da. Bunch of nonsense, really. Then I got a breakthrough. First, it was the devil. And it was God, blaming God. I'm still trying to play the blame game, but I was just kind of good. Then I got a breakthrough after about 10, 15 minutes. I'm kind of praying, but 
Really, it was complaining. Jesus stood straight up, threw my hands up in the air. Jesus, what would you do? Because I don't know. Clear as a bell, guys, spoke words. I always go to my word. Took me to James 3.17. I had to use wisdom in this. Love, peace, forgive that person when the world's telling me not to. Because several years ago, so. Um, so what I'm saying, guys, is I am, this is going to be a little bit longer than I want, but I'm going to keep it under 10 minutes, I promise. Um, so several years ago, guys, I did the, you know, this is a natural thing, but this is, this is where I'm coming from with this. This is why we have to really, even though it's natural, it was, it was a spiritual lesson for me. About to rain, it was, I think it was around March. And so, you know, I'm doing the, the guy thing, you know. My hedges don't look okay in my yard. I'm not a real big landscaper and everything, but it's, it's okay. But my yard looked really good. My grass was really green and it just, was, you know, that, that part of my yard looked really good. My wife was really happy with it. I'm just, that's the best I could do and that's all I could do. But so I pulled, go to Home Depot. Get my fertilizer, load it in a cart. Somebody that I had worked with for, in 1994. So it had been almost 19 years. It had been a long time, guys. It had been a long time. They were still there. They were still in charge of the lawn guard. They had been in the lawn guard ever since I'd known them. 20 years, probably. They tell me, oh, that's the wrong fertilizer. Okay, well, they should know. I've been doing this a long time, you know, the same place and, you know, a lot more authoritative on it than me. So, okay, and plus it's the wrong time to do it. Okay. To me, no, it's about to rain and I'm thinking it's early enough, but, you know, I'm not. So I'm just getting the regular kind I always get, Scott's Turf Builder. It's expensive, but it always worked real well. Killed all the weeds and made the grass green and looked good. It tells me something that's a little cheaper, but I didn't read the directions on the package. And they didn't tell me or ask me, do you have St. Augustine or Bermuda? I have St. Augustine. The fertilizer is for Bermuda. I put it on and the next day, guys, my yard was brown as this thing back here. Killed it died all of it pretty much and i'm mad my wife's mad go back up there tell them they owe us a yard blah 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 you know because i'm th she's thinking all the work and the money we have to do to redo everything and i am too a couple days i was mad then i got an answer from the lord he spoke to me and he said my son How much more important are the things I'm telling you to say, speak, and impact they're going to have on others' lives that you get it right? Because lives are at stake. You could destroy people. So that's what I'm saying, guys. We could destroy people when we really think we're trying to help, and we're and and, and, and maybe it's you know maybe the heart the heart issue may be right, but we can kind of get bent. I can do. And yes, a lot of this stuff needs to be said. The truth does need to get out there. I'm not telling you to water it down, compromise it, any of that, because that's just as bad. That's just as wrong. That's just that's the opposite. And that's where the church is at right now today. That's the sensationalism of the Shazam Hollywood Christianity. You know, it's a bunch of garbage and hogwash. I'll just be point blank with it, but... So I get it. It is a time to live holy and righteous and by his word. And we need to say all that. But we really need to make sure that it's directed in the way that God wants it and timing and all that. There's just some pieces to it, guys, that we have to just kind of just put into perspective. That's why prayer is so important. But in the prayer piece, it's not just going to God and speaking a bunch of stuff 
asking for things and supplications and all that's great. The reason why we have two of these and only one of these, and there's a reason why a lot of scriptures end with, he that had an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, because he'll tell you what to, all the way from Moses to just look at all the people that he told what to say, Esther and to the king and about all that Mordecai and Haman and all that mess. He'll give us the wisdom if we're willing to listen. Because then that get, then that becomes filtered through the Holy Ghost and the wisdom from above, the James three seventeen. Now you know there's just so that's where I'm at, guys. I just want to get this right. I don't want to burn up somebody's yard. I don't want to destroy somebody. But at the same time, I've got to be obedient. I'm a watchman. I've got to you know blow the trumpet in Zion. I've got to sound the alarm. I got to do the Ezekiel thirty three. Ezekiel 3, you know, warn people. Man, I don't like a lot of it, guys. God, I don't really want to say that. I don't really want to be that. I don't really want to, you know, so it's like some of it's still a little raw. And it, it, I'm going to do everything I can, though, to get it right, guys, because like what I just said about this burning up the yard. So we love you guys. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. So use it as God would have you to use it, as Jesus would have you to use it, as the Holy Ghost is leading and guiding and directing you, as his word. Not just, you know, I saw one post, I'm going to cherry pick, no, don't cherry pick the scriptures, guys, to, to get on your soapbox. I can do it too, of course. So... It has to be rooted and grounded well. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I'm going to end it with that, guys. If you want to email me, just email me at Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com. Google us, Jesus is alive in America. You can find us YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, blog with us on Jesus is alive in America.com. Uh, you know, let us know. Uh, put your comments on here too. Good, bad, ugly. I don't, you know, let's hear it. Love you guys. Bye bye.